The biggest and baddest thunderstorms on the planet form every spring thanks to a unique set of ingredients in Count the United Yodemo, States. Oklahoma, taking on some hail right now. Every year, these ingredients come together to create an atmosphere favoring rotating thunderstorms. These rotating storms are called supercells, and these supercells are tornado factories. To storm chasers like myself, supercells are the ultimate catch. They're literally what most of us are after. These rotating storms can take on many interesting and unique shapes. From scallop bases high above the surface to low base churning demons threatening to drop a monster tornado to the more picturesque flying saucer look. Supercells are why I want to take my camera out of the bag every spring. The ingredients required to come together to create these storms are similar parts miraculous and devastating. To create a supercell, okay. you need the ultimate atmospheric yeah, recipe. There there. The first ingredient you need is warm and humid air in place at the surface with colder and drier air aloft. This is atmospheric instability and you need this for storm clouds to rise up into the atmosphere. But what causes storm clouds to rise in the first place? Well, that's lift. You can get lift from many sources, from surface boundaries like fronts or the dry line to warm air advection and even to upslope flow. Lift is usually maximized near clashing air masses, but you can also get lift from other processes as well. If you have both instability and lift, the final crucial ingredient still needs to be in place. For supercells to form, you need ample wind shear. But <laughs> what you really need is a special type of wind shear, with winds from the south or southeast at the surface turning to the west aloft, with increasing wind speeds as you go up. This helps create and maintain the mesocyclones that all supercells possess. When you mix all three together, instability, lift, and wind shear, you get an environment ripe for the tornado factories known as supercells. But not all supercells are created equal. In fact, there are three main types of supercells that you will commonly see. The first, and perhaps most common, is the high precipitation supercell. These monster storms have the lowest levels of the mesocyclone completely obscured by rain. These are dangerous storms to document, to be sure, with the tornado oftentimes hidden behind a wall of rain. Another type of supercell is a favorite of mine and many other storm chasers as well. It's the low precipitation supercell. These storms are typically the exact opposite of the HP, with sometimes seemingly no precipitation following at all. Tornadoes with these types of supercells are more rare. But beware, driving near this spinning storm cloud could result in you encountering giant hell. The ideal tornado factory, though, is the classic supercell. As you might have guessed, these are a middle ground between the HP and LP storms and are examples of supercells perfectly in balance. The low-level mesocyclone isn't too waterlogged, but there is enough of a storm core to set in motion the processes you look for to get a tornado to form. Many of the most notorious tornadoes in history have come from classic supercells. But why are supercells so good at producing tornadoes anyways? Let's look at how these factories churn out twisters. Tornadoes form in environments with both lower cloud bases, thanks to higher humidity near the surface, and stronger low-level wind shear. Both of these, along with my preferred isolated storm modes, are the ingredients I look for to choose which chase days to pursue each spring. After a supercell has formed, the manufacturing process begins immediately to produce a tornado. 
Storms that are by themselves or isolated stand the best chance to manufacture a tornado. This is because the processes that go into producing tornadoes are very fickle, and disturbances from other storms can jam up the gears, so to speak, putting the entire process on hold. Now the first stop on the assembly line is the storm pulling in the rich and unstable air into its updraft, which is the visible cloud of the storm. This is called inflow, and you'll often hear storm chasers talk about this being the first sign a tornado could be coming. Once a storm is pulling in sufficient inflow, another process begins to take shape on the back side of the storm, the rear flank downdraft. This piece of the process is a unique component of the supercell, and it likely plays a key role in the formation of a tornado. Science hasn't quite settled why, but there are some clues. As the rear flank downdraft descends and wraps around the southern end of the mesocyclone, and then around to the east side, this helps focus the rotation in a smaller and smaller area while lowering the pressure underneath the updraft. As the spin of this feature increases and deepens, a funnel may become visible and start reaching toward the surface. Eventually, you'll see signs of ground contact as this process plays out. The tornado factory has done it again. So hey, now that you have the basics of supercells, it's time to look deeper. Check out one of these videos on how weather forecasters know supercells could be on the way to keep your learning journey alive.